Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, we'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Dewey Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the Dewey Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 59 in the Dewey Rheims Bible, but Psalm 60 in the RSV. Unto the end, for them that shall be changed, for the inscription of a title, to David himself, for doctrine, when he set fire to Mesopotamia of Syria, and Sobal, and Joab returned and slew of Edom in the vale of the salt pits, twelve thousand men. The vale of the salt pits is also called the Valley of Salt, or Arabah. It's south of the Dead Sea, and between Judah and Edom, so it's possible that David might have fought Edom's forces here, though some historians believe it was a different group. In 2 Samuel chapter 8, verse 13, David fights a battle there, killing thousands, and sets up a garrison in Edom shortly afterwards. This was after David had subdued Syria. Joab was one of David's nephews, the son of his sister Zeruiah, and a powerful military commander, both skilled and thorough, and, unfortunately, not an ethical man. While David was in Edom, Joab had every male Edomite that he could find killed, and he also committed multiple deliberate murders, including his own cousin Amasa. He was also the one who carried out David's order to put Uriah on the front lines of battle so that he would be killed and David could marry his wife, the one great sin of King David. Ultimately, he turned against David's son Solomon later in life, trying to prevent him from becoming the new king by siding with one of Solomon's rivals, Adonijah, and was executed for it. Joab was talented and obeyed David most of the time, but he was unprincipled and impulsive and gave David plenty of reasons for sorrow. O God, thou hast cast us off and hast destroyed us. Thou hast been angry and hast had mercy on us. God has the power to allow people to suffer, die, and experience ruin and destruction, but he's merciful by nature. Thou hast moved the earth and hast troubled it. Heal thou the breaches thereof, for it has been moved. Thou hast shewn thy people hard things. Thou hast made us drink wine of sorrow. Thou hast given a warning to them that fear thee, that they may flee from before the bow, that thy beloved may be delivered. Save me with thy right hand and hear me. God has the power to warn people against certain courses of action in many ways, even ways that make people sad. This verse may refer to God's ability to cause literal earthquakes, or it may merely be referring to a division and conflict between people of different lands. In any case, there's clearly a large wound on earth that David is requesting that God repair. God hath spoken in his holy place. I will rejoice, and I will divide Sechem, and will meet out the veil of tabernacles. Sechem, also called Shechem, was one of the Canaanite cities that David had taken over. David is planning to devote time and resources to sacrifice and worship of God, even in the new lands which he's conquered with God's help. Galad is mine, and Manassas is mine, and Ephraim is the strength of my head. Judah is my king. Moab is the pot of my hope. Into Edom will I stretch out my shoe. To me the foreigners are made subject. These are the lands that David has just passed through and conquered at the time this psalm was written. The term, pot of my hope, refers to a type of pot used for washing and other basic uses, a lowly, less significant tool. The phrase, foreigners, refers in this case to the Philistines, who didn't share a common ancestry with the people of Israel by comparison to the Edomites, the Moabites, and so on who did. David is acknowledging these incredible developments that have taken place in his life, not bragging about them to God, but thanking God for having done so much for him. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Wilt not thou, O God, who hast cast us off? And wilt not thou, O God, go out with our armies? Give us help from trouble, for vain is the salvation of man. A plea for God to continue leading David and his army to victory in their future campaigns and journeys, because, quite simply, no one else can. Through God we shall do mightily, and he shall bring to nothing them that afflict us. In short, if God is on your side, you don't need to be afraid of anyone. 
Though there are indications that David is experiencing a loss of protection from God in the early parts of the psalm, the moment passes quickly, and most of the psalm is either an acknowledgment of the great things that God has done for David, or a statement of faith that God can continue to do great things for him, and that only God is an adequate leader for David. This is a sentiment that every human being should be able to echo, since we all need God to lead us to our ultimate victory. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.